Previously on Sailing Ruby Rose, we took our sailboat from the Mediterranean coast of France all the way to the Atlantic coast via the French canals. We ended up in La Rochelle, one of our all time favorite ports on the west coast of France. However, the time had come to leave this favorite destination of ours and point our bow north towards the United Kingdom to head back home to where it all began. You have made the formalities sur l'internet. What do we do? We take the fromage and the pain. Let's go to Capitaine Harry to make an exchange. That's a nice boat. What is that? Bordeaux 60. What the heck is that? That is lovely. Yeah. Look at that deck. After our time in the French canals and then being in the La Rochelle Marina for a couple of weeks, we could not wait to get going. It was the perfect day, light winds, blue sky, the sun was out and we just could not wait to get sailing. We need to go forward about 10 metres babe. Before heading off we decided to stop at the fuel pontoon just to top up our tanks and well that one little decision changed everything. Therese, I think we've got a Stop a second. We've got a problem. My gearbox is gone. I can be diamonds so close. And I don't wanna take a trail in the world. But I can love you. We've got no forward gear, we've got no forward drive, we've got reverse. I don't know, babe. Therese? Yeah? Okay, can you, I want you to put her very slowly into reverse for 10 seconds. Yeah. And I want you to put her into neutral and then put her into forward for 10 seconds. Do okay. that now, please. Yeah. All right. All right, forward. Yeah. Put it into forward again. Alright. Is it working now? I don't know, babe. Well, we're going forward. Yeah, that's what you want to see, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know what's going on, babe. Okay, can you tighten the lines? Tighten yeah. the stern line, please? Yeah. Is there maybe something around the propeller? Stopping it from turning? If it's, I think there's, a something, called, if there's something called clutch cones. And if the clutch, <laughs> the clutch, if the clutch, the clutch, the clutch, <laughs> me ragged. If the clutch cones slip, then the end, you just can't get forward drive. So I'm not sure what the problem is, but we cannot set off onto the open sea with a problem with our clutch cones. Is this not something that you can have a look at? No, the no. gearbox? No, Dave. It's beyond, it's beyond me literally beyond me it's taking a gearbox apart is not something i can do at this point we had little choice but to head back to our dock and get on with the task of diagnosing the problem i do not see anything so i okay. let you drive okay yeah. just give me some information if you have it yeah à ce moment nous avons pas un problème je ne sais pas il faut plonger dedans après ouais. <laughs> ouais. I can push you and you will just have to yeah, yeah. manoeuvre. And my colleague will help us. Le catway est à droite ou à gauche? Uh, si nous avons, uh, pour nous, uh, voilà. à droite, à droite, oui. Parfait. Alors. Count me in at the bow. Good match. Three meters. Two. One, keep going, keep going. That's it, you're in. <laughs> now that we were safely back in our slip and thank you to the staff at La Rochelle Marina for helping us do that safely, it was now time to get onto the sailing forums, do some research, give Southerly a call for their advice and get stuck into diagnosing the problem. Okay, so what I need you to do is go and start the engine. All right, ready? The engine connects to the drive shaft through the clutch and by using the throttle, you can engage it to go forward or reverse. 
Now the problem is that if the cones are slipping, then what happens is you push the throttle cable forwards and you get no drive. Increasing the revs, eventually the clutch will engage and you will suddenly get a surge of power. While you can limp along like this, this is no way to be sailing as your motor is something you may need in an emergency. I'm gonna go back downstairs. Yeah. And when I get downstairs, 10 seconds after I've gone downstairs, I want you to put it into tick over. Yeah. Just a small amount of tick over, yeah? So I want you to engage forward tick over, yeah? We're not bothering with reverse it, so I want forward tick over, yeah? Just a little bit. Just a little bit, and then you leave it. If you hear me yell at any point, put it into neutral. I don't know if I can hear you yelling. Okay, can well, you hear fine. Me yelling? No. Okay. okay, so put it into forward tick over. Yeah. What I'm going to do is see if there's any play between forward engaged yeah. and the full, the full amount of play if I depress it manually. If you need me to stop, then just whack something on the. On the... Okay. So give me 10 seconds, yeah? So with me in the engine bay at Teresa at the helm, I was manually engaging the throttle to see if we could get the drive to engage. And while it would engage some of the time, every now and then you would find that nothing happened that is indicative of a slipping clutch cone. So look, you put it forward. Does it do anything? Yeah. And then it goes whoosh. I want a bit more forward revs this time, yeah? Okay. I think that worked. What did you do? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing unusual, I put it into forward. Well, what did you do? What did you actually do? What procedure did you just use? You put it into forward for how long? I just put it straight into forward and then it, it there was a lot of turbulence. It looked like we had um, our brakes started swinging as if we were going okay. forward. Right. And um, that was it. And then I got scared and I put it back into forward. What's your plan right now? I'm fairly sure that the it could be a clutch cone problem. Um, but to exclude a bag around the propeller. Well, which is stopping it from engaging into forward drive because it came out of here perfectly. Yeah. So you would think, that, but the cut, clutch, clo <laughs> clutch cones don't just, it's not, I don't think it's catastrophic failure, they start slipping. The only thing that makes me think it may be something stuck around the prop is that there is, we don't have a problem with it in reverse. So it will engage, but it's only, I'm not sure if there's a separate separate cone for, for, forward, and rever for forward and reverse. I would think it, I think it, I wouldn't think it, it does. But yeah, so the things I've got to exclude, firstly, that it is a problem with um, the propeller, with something just around the propeller. The second thing I have to exclude is that there's not a problem with the Morse control. I don't think it is the Morse control. What's the Morse control? The Morse control is this, that oh. something hasn't split. Okay. Um, and I don't think it is. I looked at it, but literally I need to go into there and take it apart, because sometimes you can just lose a split pin. Mm and it will engage one way but not the other way because you've lost a split pin. If that's the case, I can go and buy a split pin easily mm. or change the Morse control out. That's not a problem, but that's where we are. So um, it's the usual um, kind of diagnosis through going through a checklist. I can't, and if, I, if, it's, if I can't find out what it is, then once I've had a shower and got all this marina water off me, I'll go and find the office, go and tell them my situation and then go and um, try and find a Yanmar engineer. That's a really sexy look, babe. You're lucky I'm not sending you in. I'm, I'm just a girl. I don't know what yeah. I'm doing. What was it I saw on the internet? Everyone wants to be the captain until you have to do captain shit. <laughs> oh, me ragged. And at least the water is clear enough to see. It's not. Well, it is, because I can see your legs, so you've got a little bit of visibility. Right. Could have been in the canals, babe. Could have been in the canals. What did I do in the canals? cleaned up a little bit but it's just it's just algal growth nothing we haven't seen before yeah see that's out of gear right yeah 
yeah. Out of gear means no ripples. Yeah. In gear. Ripples. No, that's, yeah. What the hell? That sounds like it, something's just slipped into place there. Yeah, so that the, the gearbox is slipping. So it was off to try and find a Yanmar engineer. Luckily, as La Rochelle is such a major yachting hub, we knew that there was an accredited Yanmar engineer within 200 meters of the boat. Sometimes luck does actually strike. So after protracted conversation with the Yanmar engineer, the new clutch comb was ordered and we had an appointment for him to come and visit when it arrived to try and fit the clutch cone. The only thing we had to work out now was whether the boat would need to be lifted to fit this as there was not a lot of room in our engine bay to slide the prop shaft back. C'était difficile, oui? My take on it was that this, I mean, it's difficult to see because there's a plate here, but here is the attachment and for the, the flange that attaches the the prop shaft to the the prop shaft to the uh to the gearbox so essentially engine here gearbox was there prop shaft um, and there's a flange which joins the two you have to gain about three inches of of uh stern motion backwards and what he was able to do there's this plate which is slightly flexible and he was able to take this out to give him the space that he needed you know, fair, fair play to him for getting that done this is the back end of the engine mm -hmm. so this turns like this yeah so and then there's a so there's a, a shaft that goes in there mm -hmm. so this is the prop shaft yeah mm -hmm. that goes forward and the thing that you need to see is this this flange attaches to the back of the gearbox so mm -hmm. it bolts onto here with mm -hmm. these bolts and then attaches and then there's the lever forward and backwards to to kind of get, engage your throttle yeah so uh, a little update um one of the problems of, of small space living is that um your spaces are small <laughs> which is bleeding obvious but it essentially means that this boat um was built to cram as much living space in as possible and as such it meant that that our engine compartment the engine compartment is really small now with new and modern engines they're tiny i kind of was worrying that with the problems with the gearbox, we would have to take the boat out of the water. And the reasons are as follows. The, the, you have the engine, and then you've got the gearbox attached to the, the back of the engine, and then the prop shaft. But you need to be able to remove the prop shaft back, or move the prop shaft back to get the gearbox off. And really the problem is that we've got a prop cutter. So you can't move the prop shaft back a crazy amount. Anyway, engineer turned up at uh, 20 past nine this morning with these little roll up in mouth. He was able to kind of literally uh, gain about an inch, uh, an, an inch of room by kind of um, moving the, the prop shaft back a little bit. And um, you know, you look at the engine compartment, just see how small and restrictive that space is. Anyway, the problem appears to be uh, that the clutch cone has gone. He said I'll be back tomorrow. Theoretically, we're back. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear the rain? Because uh, it's raining outside. And um, yeah, you can definitely see it on the windows. Or can you? Yeah, you can. So today we are leaving La Rochelle. We have finally, <laughs> our hand has been forced because the marina have literally said to us, you have to go. Um, the person who uh, whose slip we're in is coming back today. Um, so yeah, we literally have no choice. We have to go. And frankly, we've got mixed feelings about it because at the moment, the weather is really not conducive to um, kind of port hopping our way up the coast. Uh, there's a lot of northwesterlies coming through um, and then some apparently really strong winds coming through at the weekend. So it's like the forecast, it's like the forecast doesn't want us to go. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a slog. And um, yeah, we're, it's cold, like there's been a really cold change come through, so it's quite chilly, it's raining, and we've got about 400 miles to go till we get to the UK, so I don't think either of us are really relishing the thought, actually. The weather forecast this morning, that the French uh, TV was saying that the, this weather is unseasonably bad. You know, mm. this is the, it's literally the middle of August, and yeah. it's, you know, it's cold here yeah. in and the south of France. Well, not... In fact, all of France is cold. It's not just us, is it? 
because we tried to leave and then our, our clutch cone slipped and we were like okay better get that replaced and now it's like we have to leave and the weather's not really cooperating anyway look it's sailing you can't always be good i know i know we need to stop complaining man because up a little bit you know? and and quite frankly the french like quite clearly do not care at all what the weather is like they're off and out like regardless yesterday when it was absolutely torrential all day we still saw boats going out in the morning day sailors not racers yeah day sailors I mean, you can't kind of say racers going out in all sorts of conditions yeah well if they've got a race to race then yeah you, ha you have to you have a choice but yeah these are just cruisers so yes that is the plan for today actually i haven't told you the plan for today because we don't know what it is but we need to leave the marina and we need to we, our two options are either to um go up to Sabdalone, which is 30 miles away or anchor in off Ilderé, which is the um, the island just a few miles away. And uh, we'd like to make some progress north, but I think that the wind direction is going to have different ideas. And it's already like 10 o'clock and it's raining. So yeah, I think it's probably just going to be Ilderé. Well, we made it to the little anchorage and we chose not to go any further because it was like 25 knots on yeah that. we got gusts of 25 knots at some point at one point and uh yeah we're making about two and a half to three knots so we figured that like 10 to 12 hours of that would be rubbish so yeah we've just anchored off uh Ildere, which is just behind me um, which is usually a very pretty little island but i don't think we'll be enjoying it today uh, because it is really blustery and still quite cold so we are just at the little anchorage and the plan is that we'll just spend the day here just working and then tomorrow morning we will get up bright and early and we will go either to Sabdalon or Ildere we haven't decided exactly where yet depends on the, on the progress that we make hey? Ildere sorry Ildere not Ildere that's where we are right now Well, here we are. As you can see, we are not in a beautiful, idyllic anchorage. We are back in La Rochelle Marina, and I guess we have some explaining to do, although perhaps the weather is self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, we've taken some decisions, uh, done a bit of a turnaround in more ways than one, and um, I think now is not the time to talk about it. We're still kind of trying to process uh, the things that we've been talking about but we'll explain everything in a few days when we have our thoughts together it's good news good yeah no nah, it is good news I think it is <laughs> may be able to tell we have come back to La Rochelle we're in La Rochelle Marina again it's like Hotel California <laughs> it really is you can check out anytime you like but you can never leave we have some explaining to do to you don't we you? do well, yeah. we don't have some explaining we don't we do what the hell we want can I take my sunglasses you, of course off? you can no um, that's way too bright sorry guys I have to keep them on we left we tried to leave we did leave we went our plan was we had a weather window we went to an anchorage it was five miles away and while anchored and getting buffeted around horrendously um, with very little protection we just looked at the weather and thought we've got two weeks to get ourselves back to the uk two to three weeks yeah and there is just too much to good stuff to see within a couple of hundred miles of here the atlantic western coast of france we have sailed 
twice before. Mm. So we know the islands of South Brittany and North Brittany and how amazing they are to visit and for us to show you this. So after not too much soul searching, mm -hmm. we just decided, that's it, that's, the, that's our season done. We'll cut our season short by about three weeks, yeah. pull the boat out of the water and come and winter here in beautiful France. Yeah, so a few factors um, played into our decision making. One, of course, was that it all kind of came to a head when we were in that rolly anchorage, which, by the way, was the best protected anchorage for miles. So it's not like we could have gone around the corner and been better protected. And it kind of dawned on us that the, the weather was really really shit and the forecast was not showing any improvement at all over the next 10 days and we would have to beat into the wind for every single passage between here and home. the south coast yes yeah, that's the south coast of england yeah. and we just thought why there was all this strong wind coming through all this rain coming through the temperature has dropped significantly and it just w wouldn't be fun and it wouldn't be fun for you guys but more importantly it would not be yeah. fun at all for us yeah and we're lucky enough to be able to just stop yeah this is the first sun we've seen in what five six days yeah literally we've come out today we've kind of emerged like little meerkats coming out of a burrow it's like oh there's some sunshine but this is a brief respite there's another gale coming in and literally uh if we watch in the french meteo uh this is the worst summer they've had in, in a while. We'll show you more of La Rochelle and then you'll see us packing up for the season and then you'll see us getting, uh, you know, getting ourselves ready for season five, I believe. Yeah, well, who knows what that will entail. Obviously, the boat is still up for sale um, and yeah, we're, it's just that she'll be in the UK, uh, sorry, she'll be in France over winter rather than the UK. Protecting her VAT status. Which is the other issue, yes. Yeah, we're not talking about Brexit, on this No, one. well, we, the, the, the reality is that if we take the boat back to the UK and there is a hard Brexit, uh, which probably would have happened by the time this video comes out, then uh, we lose the VAT paid status on our boat for the for Europe. So that would be pretty bad. Yeah. So anyway, anyway. on to La Rochelle. La Rochelle. La Rochelle. Uh, new songs and a group d'anglais uh, from Liverpool and Maintenon, La Rochelle. So, donc, uh, merci beaucoup d'écouter. Pardon, ma je ne parle pas le français very well. J'adore La Rochelle. Oui, j'adore La Rochelle. C'est mag magnifique. Je déteste Brexit, so... Uh, I love Europe, all right. Beautiful. This is called Wagon Wheel. Making the decision to cut our season short and continue north the following year was a tough one. But once we made that choice, we felt that a huge weight had been lifted from our shoulders. It felt like fate didn't want us to leave Laura Shell just yet, and instead of fighting that, we just went with it. Since 